Long before the word dinosaur even had meaning, the Triassic landscape echoed with the footsteps of Rawisukians, a fearsome family of reptiles sometimes casually lumped in as prehistoric crocodiles, though that hardly does them justice. These weren't belly-dragging swamp lurkers, no. Rawisukians stood tall, with legs tucked directly beneath their bodies like a theropods, striding across ancient floodplains like armored tanks on stilts. Some species stretched over 20 feet long and bore thick scales, dagger-like teeth, and a surprisingly efficient gait. One of the strangest twists? They're more closely related to modern crocs than to any dinosaur, but if you squinted at their skeletal silhouette, you might have guessed otherwise. Early onlookers did. In fact, for years, paleontologists mistook Rewosukians for primitive meat-eating dinosaurs. And in a way, they played the role. Apex predators that terrorized the earliest true dinosaurs, who were still small and scrappy in comparison. The dominant predators of this proto-Mesozoic world weren't dinosaurs yet, but they walked like them, hunted like them, and for a while, they reigned like them. If Rawasukians were the heavyweights of the Triassic, then Postosuchus was the prize fighter. Stretching up to 6 meters, about 20 feet in length, this apex predator stalked what is now North America like a silent executioner. Its skull was thick and brutish, lined with blade-like teeth that could shear through flesh and bone in a single clamp. Some scientists have likened its bite force to that of a modern alligator, but delivered with terrifying speed. But here's the thing. Pustosuchus didn't just look like a dinosaur, it may have hunted them. Early dinosaurs like Colophysis were about as long as a golden retriever and far lighter, making them quick but vulnerable. Fossil sites show both animals in the same strata, suggesting predator and prey once shared and likely fought over the same ground. Strangely enough, some Pustosuchus fossils suggest it may have occasionally walked on two legs, especially when moving fast. Imagine that a hulking crocodile relative rising up to sprint like a raptor, a transitional monster, one foot in the past, one toe clawing into a future it would never live to see. Let's pause the predator parade for a second, because the world these Rians roamed was nothing like ours. Picture it. No grass underfoot, no flowers blooming, not even a single bird in the sky. Instead, vast plains of ferns and towering conifers blanketed the land, while dragonfly-like insects with two-foot wingspans buzzed overhead. It was a world dominated by green, yes, but not the kind you'd picnic on, and the climate, unforgiving. The Triassic was a time of extremes, scorching heat, bone-dry deserts, and erratic monsoons that could turn dust into floods overnight. Volcanic activity was common, with entire regions choked by the slow burn of continental rifting. It was as if the Earth itself was still experimenting with life. In this surreal, volatile ecosystem, the Ryans weren't just predators. They were survivors. Their bodies were armored, their lungs adapted to thin air, and their dominance depended on navigating a chaotic planet that seemed to constantly tilt between creation and destruction. You see, the rise of the dinosaurs wasn't inevitable. It was forged in a crucible, and for a while, these ancient giants held the upper hand. For all their size and power, the Rians had a fatal flaw. They were built for a world that didn't last. As climates shifted and ecosystems fractured, the once dominant predators found themselves increasingly outmaneuvered, not by larger rivals, but by smaller, faster ones. Enter the early dinosaurs, modest in stature, but lean, agile, and adaptable. Species like Eoraptor and Herrerasaurus weren't apex killers, yet but they didn't need to be. They reproduced quickly, thrived in varied habitats, and exploited niches the sluggish Ryans couldn't reach. Think of them as the opportunists in a crumbling empire, darting between the legs of giants and quietly taking over. Some researchers suggest this shift wasn't just about agility, it was also about biology. Dinosaurs had more efficient respiratory systems and lighter skeletons, giving them an edge in endurance and heat regulation. While Postosuchus thundered through the forest like a tank, Kelophysis zipped through the undergrowth like a motorbike. And when the world tilted, when fire and ash began to fall, being quick, small, and numerous suddenly became the best survival strategy. Most people have heard of the Permian extinction, the so-called Great Dying that nearly ended life on Earth. 
but fewer know about the quieter cataclysm that ended the reign of the Ryans, the Triassic-Jurassic extinction event. Roughly 200 million years ago, the planet cracked open, literally. Massive volcanic eruptions tore through the supercontinent Pangaea, pumping carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere on a scale that's hard to fathom. Global temperatures soared, then plummeted. Acid rain fell. Oxygen levels dipped. The seas turned toxic. For land animals, especially large, slow reproducing ones, it was a death sentence. The Rians, dominant for tens of millions of years, vanished almost entirely in a blink. No dramatic last stand, no cinematic battle, just gone. Wiped out in the background noise of planetary chaos. And in the silence that followed, the survivors crept forward. Dinosaurs, having already found cracks in the old regime, suddenly found themselves alone on the throne. This extinction wasn't the most famous, but it was one of the most consequential. It didn't just clear the board, it reshuffled the evolutionary deck entirely. Here's where things get weird. While the general story seems neat, the Ryans ruled, vanished, and dinosaurs took over, some fossils refused to play along. Scattered across parts of Europe and South America are fragmentary remains that hint at giant predators surviving longer than expected, or appearing in regions thought to be dinosaur-only territory. Take Sarosuchus, for instance. Some of its fossils show up oddly close to early Jurassic layers, just after the supposed extinction. A dating error? A relic population? Or are we missing entire chapters of the prehistoric life? Even more curious are the ghost lineages, species we believe existed based on evolutionary clues, but haven't yet found. It's like seeing footprints on a beach, but no body. Something was there. But what? These puzzle pieces whisper of a murkier transition. Maybe the fall of the Ryans wasn't a clean sweep, but a slow fade. Maybe pockets of them hung on, in shadowy ecosystems we've barely begun to excavate. Paleontology, after all, is like trying to reconstruct a book from a handful of torn pages, and some pages just don't fit the table of contents. Today we walk over their graves without knowing it. In dry canyons, roadside cuts, and windswept deserts, the bones of the Rians still whisper their story. Jagged teeth embedded in ancient rock. Footprints pressed into what was once wet mud, now frozen in stone. A ribcage collapsed under the weight of time. One such place is Ghost Ranch, New Mexico, an eerie name for a fossil site brimming with ancient violence. There, scientists uncovered a tangle of skeletons, early dinosaurs like Coulophyses, but also remnants of their potential killers. It's like stumbling on a prehistoric crime scene with clues preserved by sheer geological luck. And these discoveries aren't just about the past. They shape how we understand evolution, survival, and even our own place in Earth's history. Each fossil is a time capsule. Each excavation, a conversation with something unimaginably old. The Rians may have vanished, but they left fingerprints all over the rise of the dinosaurs, and perhaps, in a small way, helped shape the world we inherited. Because before the thunder of Tyrannosaurs, there was another reign, a forgotten one. Ultimately, the arrival of humans marked the end of an era for these magnificent isolated ecosystems. A world of giant, often flightless, creatures and fragile biodiversity, unprepared for sudden change, faded into memory, leaving behind traces in bone, myth, and cautionary echoes about the power of our presence. If you found yourself imagining Rawisukians stalking through fern-filled worlds, wait until you hear about the island where giant birds ruled the skies and humans arrived with fire. Tap into our next journey through time. Until then, stay curious.